this week on One Devotion. A EuroLeague rookie credits his family's females for sparking his basketball ambitions. A soaring star cherishes how much he has learned on and off the court in Europe. Three heroes look back on the most unforgettable Final Four finish this century. And one spectacular performer dominates the best moments of the week. When Anadolu FS Istanbul travelled to play Lokomotiv Kuban this week, forward Derek Brown might have been the happiest visiting player ever to land in Krasnodar, Russia. It was in Krasnodar where the European part of Brown's basketball career began, and his three seasons with Lokomotiv proved to be a life-changing experience for him. Definitely. Definitely. I'm so thankful that this opportunity, I'm telling you, is, is one of the best things that happened to me, uh, just as a person. This experience on the court has made me better, off the court has made me even better than that. That is not to say that moving across an ocean did not require adjustments, but making them was part of what Brown enjoyed in his new destination. It was definitely a culture shock just because they do things a little bit different. Obviously, um, you know, I was in my comfort zone in America. You know, everything is this, everything is kind of given to you more so. Um, and I had to adapt to their culture, which I actually, it was a challenge at first, but uh, it was a good challenge. On the court, Brown soon learned to love the European game. One thing I liked, every game mattered. Every game matters over here, you know, there's no, uh, you know, we lose three or four games, it's okay, you know, and that is a big difference from back home to, uh, to European basketball. As he won the 2013 Euro Cup in his first season with Lokomotiv and later that year was named November MVP six weeks into his EuroLeague debut, Brown seemed to adjust with ease. But he credits his teammates at the time with speeding his acclimation. I was lucky to, to be thrown in a situation with good, good guys, number one because, um, you know, your teammates kind of make your experience. If you have good teammates, your experience will be a lot better. That strong bonding process leads directly to team success, Brown said. It's kind of like your family. You team every day for 10 months. You might have a day off here or there, but not really. Uh, so if you get along with them off the court, you, you uh, build some chemistry um, that you can easily see that on the court, and, and, and vice versa. If it's not, you can see it on the court as well if, if you guys don't get along. So that's a key aspect to any successful team is uh, how, how you mesh with your teammates off the court. It is also off the court that Brown has perfected at least one life skill that he can always count on going forward. Adapt. Um, I think that's what life is about. It's, Something's thrown at you, and, and how you're able to adapt to that situation that's thrown at you is life. And um, it's on the court, it's in the workplace, it's in relationship, it's, it's in every aspect of life. So I think adaptability is, is the number one trait that successful people have. Being open to new challenges is one reason that Brown decided to move to Istanbul this season to experience something different. This is totally different from Russia. Uh, it's a big city, a lot of traffic, uh, a lot of traffic. But besides that, it's an amazing city. Uh, the people are pretty open and um, it's a lot of things to do. I'm excited about you know learning about the Turkish environment. Thriving once again now as a double-digit scorer for an FS team getting better by the game, Brown would only urge the same willingness to learn on any player who has the chance to wander far from home. I wouldn't trade it uh, for anything. And I actually would encourage people to, if this opportunity arises, yeah, just try it out. And uh, be open-minded. You know, like I said, don't bring America to Turkey or to Russia, you know, adapt to their lifestyle and their culture and you'll become a better person for it.
and a better basketball player. Opening the season with eight new players, none of whom were household names, Olympiakos Pireos generated zero consideration as a title favourite or even a Final Four contender when the 2011-12 EuroLeague started, not even in the Reds' own locker room. We were in the, in the rebuilding mood uh, this year, you know, so we don't even have in our mind to, to win the EuroLeague. Modest expectations remained as the Reds reached mid-season with as many defeats as victories. But that's precisely when recent additions Joey Dorsey and AC Law found their rhythm along with rookie Kostas Lukas, who capped the first of the team's new trademark, come from behind victories. The team with some newcomers just they definitely changed the face, changed the basketball playing. Things start to be very, very balanced. It is a very, very rare situation. The next big comeback on the road in game one of the playoffs propelled Olympiakos past Montepaschi Siena and onward to the final four in Istanbul. Game by game, we we'll show the character, we we'll build the character, and uh, we we'll play game by game much, much better. Against favoured FC Barcelona in the semi-final, Olympiakos kept control of a close scoreboard and when in doubt, put the ball in the hands of Vasilis Panoulis. Not only the guy for the crucial moment and for the last shots, that he was a real leader of the team and all together was a real one great great team. In the championship for the trophy, Olympiakos met mighty Seska Moscow to whom it had lost twice by an average of 19 points during the season. Inside, in our hearts, uh, everybody started to believe that we can do something special. Nothing, however, could have prepared fans for what happened after Olympiakos fell behind to Seska by 19 points with 11 minutes left. I still believe that we can do it, we can succeed. You know, if we play good defence, many games, uh, physically we was ready to play for, uh, 40 minutes game, and especially the last 5-10 minutes, all team was ready to play 100%. What followed was the greatest comeback in European title game history, with youngsters Slukas and Kostas Papanikolaou sparking the comeback then handing over the reins to veteran Spanoulis and Printezis for an unbelievable finish to an unforgettable championship season. Honestly to say, in 100 games, maybe opportunity, one to finish like it finished after minus 19, but uh, let's say now, yes, it is EuroLeague, it is basketball, that everything happened, the game, the finish, at the last second, it is, it, it happened. All this thing, how we turn the game, how Siska lose, uh, lost the free throws, how we make the basket, all this thing, uh, we were the underdog, and Siska was the big favorite, and uh, we made something unreal. When Siska has lost the second free throw, something inside me says that I, I don't know, I feel like I will be the last guy that I will shoot. I will take this shot. I don't know how, but I feel it will be like this. But anyway, as, as I said many, many times, I believe that uh, whoever is going to be in my position, for sure, had to make, because uh, everything happened for one reason, and uh, this day was our day. spectacular individual displays and thrilling finishes in top 16 round two let's review the best of the action 
said Evita won on the road at Darul Shafaka, Lokomotiv edged out Tefes, Fenerbahce won in Belgrade, and Panathinaikos overcame Unicaja. Semier Den's inside dominance gave Darul Shafaka early control, but Sedevita hit back after Jacob Pullen caught fire. Pullen finished with 25 points, but the game winner was Henry Walker, who hit a late triple to give Sedevita its fourth road win of the season. Anadolu Efes was led by Derek Brown against his former team, but Lokomotiv were boosted by back-to-back -back weekly MVP Malcolm Delaney and hit a late game-winning three-pointer through Ryan Brokoff, with Brown unable to respond with the last shot of the game. There was a similar finish in Athens, where 22 points from Jamar Smith allowed Unikaha to compete, but Dimitris Diamantidis inspired Panathinaikos and teed up James Feldin for a late game-winning three-pointer, which he nailed. There was no such close finish in Belgrade, where the spectacular Jan Vesely delivered an awesome performance for Fenerbahce. His ten offensive rebounds were the second-highest tally in EuroLeague history, and his five block shots tied a club record. Fenerbahce and Lokomotiv stay perfect with 2-0 and zero records, followed by Unicaja, FS Panathinaikos and Sedevita. Bamberg hammered Jalgiris, Seska outlasted the reigning champs, Barcelona blitz Himki and Olympiakos won in Vitoria. In the game of the week, recently re-signed Casey Rivers kept Real Madrid competitive for three quarters, but Seska's backcourt duo won the day as Milos Teodosic scored 23 points and Nando De Colo added 28, with the duo also combining for 14 assists in an impressive home win. Veteran leader Juan Carlos Navarro helped Barcelona establish a solid lead over Himki, and Pau Ribas contributed four triples as the Spanish team comfortably eased home after never looking in trouble. Laboral Cucha kept on fighting through 16 points from Mike James, but the ever reliable Vasilis Panoulis stepped up with 19 points for Olympiacos which also benefited from Othello Hunter's power in the paint in a road victory to stay perfect. And in Bamberg, Janis Strelnik's led six Broza Baskets players in double figures, and Nicolò Melli registered a double-double as the home team finally won a top 16 game after 21 previous attempts, and also recorded its biggest ever winning margin in the EuroLeague. Olympiakos is clear of the pack with two wins, followed by six teams with a one and one record. Como Michael Jordan uh, ha sido siempre mi ídolo y creo que el mejor jugador que ha pisado una pista de baloncesto, pues uh, elegí el 23. Estaba pues eh, viéndole, ¿no? Intentabas imitar sus movimientos, aunque era imposible porque él lo hacía todo eh, perfecto, pero bueno, eh, miraba sus partidos y, y te quedabas alucinado, ¿no? De las cosas que hacía en la cancha, de cómo volaba, de, de cómo eh, resolvía partidos metiendo el último tiro y, y era pues, un, mi ídolo, ¿no? Y, y creo que, que el mejor jugador de todos los tiempos, sin duda. Cuando era más joven jugaba con el número 4, porque es el que llevaba mi padre eh, cuando jugaba ahí en, en Menorca y, y luego cuando fiché por el Real Madrid, pues era justo el año en que se permitía coger ya todos los números y, y el 4 estaba ocupado por un jugador más veterano, Benson Hamilton, y, y el 23 estaba libre porque eh, ningún jugador eh, lo, lo había querido o había pensado en, en cambiarse su número ¿no? y, y por suerte pues pude elegir el 23. Yo creo que el 23 es un número mítico que perdurará eh, para toda la vida y, y, 
ya no solo por Michael Jordan, ¿no? sino por todos los jugadores que viendo a Michael Jordan jugar eh, quisieron llevar ese número, entonces va a ser un número de moda durante toda la vida, seguro. Among the most surprising rookies in the Euroleague this season is sharp shooting forward Ryan Brokhov of Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar, a full-time starter who ranks among the competition's top 10 three-point shooters for a team that shares the best overall record so far. But one person who has not been at all surprised by his success is Brokhov's mother, a former top-level player in their native Australia who certainly passed on her love for the sport to her son. When my mother was young, before she started having kids, she played at the highest level, uh, which is what is now the WNBL, the National League in Australia. So she played at a really high level, um, and then she started having, uh, getting pregnant and having me and my siblings. And uh, yeah, there's there's a story she always says that just at a local game, she used to take us all and my brother and two sisters be running around chasing each other, doing what kids do, and. I'd be there sitting on the bench just watching the game, just kind of going back and forth and then trying to pick up a basketball, which is the size of me, and trying to shoot it up at the hoop. And it's something that she's always kind of reminded me about. Brokhoff's mother wasn't the only female in the family who had a big role in his development as a player, because one of the first teams he played on was coached by his aunt. Yeah, that was uh, my mother's brother's wife. So, yeah, my auntie. Um, and yeah, it was... Uh, it was a, it's a long time ago now, but it was a lot of fun. She just made the game um, fun for everyone. Everyone played equal minutes. It was all about just going out there and enjoying the game and, and getting to play basketball. The feminine influence on Brokhoff's basketball extended to his two sisters, who were also important in developing their little brother's competitive spirit during their numerous family pickup games. Yeah, we, uh, we had a little makeshift ring uh, at the back of our house and um, once I started to grow and get taller than my sisters, it was both my sisters versus me. So we'd play two on one and there was you know, certain rules and stuff where they couldn't cheat and beat me, but, but that's, uh, that's something that we did quite often in the backyard. It kind of split. Some games they would win, some games I would win. It was, it was just a lot of fun. Brokhoff has come nearly around the world since then through university in the United States to his first pro years in Turkey, in pursuit of more basketball fun, which he is finding an excess of this season in his EuroLeague debut. Following him each step of the way, but from a long distance now, is the rest of the 25-year-old's family, who remain Brokhoff's biggest supporters and his biggest critics. My mum still feels free to give me advice, definitely. Um... But they've, they've, uh, they've always been really important to me, especially my mother growing up. And I think once I started to, to play regularly and play in good competition, she became more of a fan and, and then mentor sort of on the side. So, you know, after games, she would sort of let me know what I, she wanted to know what I thought, how I played and then what she saw and then was more encouraging after that. Fittingly, it was his mother who gave Brokhoff a valuable piece of advice, which has stayed with him throughout his career and can be seen in the way he plays the game. I always enjoy it. If, if I don't enjoy it, if I don't have a passion for it, then go find something else that I am. So, you know, to, to go out there and in, enjoy playing basketball, enjoy being with friends and playing the game, and, and if I ever lose that, well then don't force it, don't become miserable playing. I'm Antas Kalinietis and uh, I'm going to try to teach my new teammate to speak Lithuanian. Pass me a bull. Okay, how do you say that? Dok man kamuli. Repeat that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, word by word. Dok. Dok. Man. Man. Kamuli. Kamuli. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> how do you say, can I have uh, a burger? Burger like burger? Yeah, burgers. <laughs> Prašo. Prašo. Duoti. Duoti. Burger. Burger. <laughs> no, you can you can say burger and we, we will understand you. Right, but right. in Lithuanian, su, muš, ti, nis. 
Show moistiness. Yes. Uh, <laughs> bro. Uh, how do I say something like, I love you? I love you. Ash. Ash. Tave. Tave. Mil. Mil. Ash. Tave. Mil. For who are you going to say that? By my girlfriend back home. I'll teach her a few things. <laughs> OK. Mano Vardas. Mano Vardas. Mantas Kalnietas. Mantas Kalnietas. Yeah, but you, you have your name. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. My name is Olivia Handler. A lot more simpler, but just Olivia Handler. Yeah, so now you, you can say in Lithuanian that. Wow. <laughs> no, I, let, let, how about we start with I am 22 years old, and we'll okay. go from there. How do you say that? Man. Man. Vidishim du meti. Whoa. Repeat that last one. Vidishim du. It's mean 22. Okay. Repeat the whole phrase. Okay. Man, vidishim du. Man, vidish just du. Meti. Meti. It's pretty good. I am from Canada. Ash is Canada. Ash is Canada. Ash is Canada. Yes. It's pretty simple. Yes. Uh, great. My job is playing basketball. Mano darbas. Mano dalbas. Žesti krepšini. Žesti. Žesti krepšini. Krepšini. <laughs> right. Repeat that one more time. Mano darbas. Mano dalbas. Žesti krepšini. Žesti <laughs> I think that's pretty good for first draft. No, last one was better. <laughs> it was probably enough for first lesson. Yeah, that's pretty good. Malcolm Delaney continued his dominant stretch for Inform Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar as he became the first player to win back-to-back -back weekly MVP honours in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague in two seasons. Delaney starred in Lokomotiv's thrilling come-from-behind 78-77 victory over Anadolu FS Istanbul on Friday night, scoring 25 points, 5 rebounds and 5 assists for a performance index rating of 30, which was the most of any player in round two of the top 16. Delaney made four of seven three-pointers and nine of 10 from the foul line in yet another superb effort for his team, which saw his average index rating climb to 21.4, third best in the league. He is now also second in the league in scoring with an average of 18.1 points per game. In only his second season in the competition, it's a third weekly MVP award for Malcolm Delaney. Number five, Istanbul, Turkey, in a key moment late on. Jacob Pullen drives, beautiful pass to Miro Bilan for a big finish and one to tie the game for Cedevita Zagreb. Wonderful awareness from Jacob Pullen, the pass to Miro Bilan. Number four, Belgrade, Serbia, an incredible night for Jan Vesely. This is one of ten offensive rebounds and a brutal slam. The second highest number of offensive rebounds in EuroLeague history. Number three, Barcelona, Spain. Shane Lowell receives the pass and hang time slam for Barcelona. Shane Lowell gets the crowd on their feet, soaring to the rim. Number two, Belgrade, Serbia, Quincy Miller has the ball, gets past his man, puts it in one hand, and he drives to the basket to explode a slam. Look at the way he holds the ball out in one hand and throws it down. Number one, Belgrade, Serbia, Jan Vesely again, tying a Fenerbahce record with five blocks, this time denying Marko Guduric. Incredible from Jan Vesely. Just look at how high he gets. It's Jan Vesely, the player of the week. Top 16 round three includes a game of the week between an established giant and a rising power, while two of Europe's most decorated teams go head to head in a compelling clash. Game of the week comes from Group E, where Fenerbahce Istanbul and backcourt Dynamo Bobby Dixon will look to prolong their perfect home record for the season against dangerous and motivated Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar and the offensive threat Victor Claver. In the same group and the same city, a high-octane local derby will see Anadolu Efes 
and three-point shooting specialist John Diebler welcomed EuroLeague rookies Darul Shafaka Dos and former FS big man Milko Bielica. Also in Group E, Servena Zvezda travels to Panathinaikos and Unicaja welcomes Servita Zagreb to Malaga. Group F is showcased by a battle of heavyweights as FC Barcelona and young gun Alex Abrines travelled to face the mercurial Milos Teodosic and Seska Moscow in the first top 16 meeting between the teams since 2008. Reigning champion Real Madrid is back on home territory as the powerful Jonas Masulis welcomes his former team Jalgiris Kaunas and his former teammate playmaker Mantas Kalnietis. Group F also sees Olympiakos play host to Bamberg, while Laboral Kucha travels to face Himki Moscow. We'll be back next week with more EuroLeague action.